years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett, and this is the Ramble. Uh, if we're lucky tonight, there will be a Ramble. Last night, we had to close our program down about halfway through because of all kinds of technical difficulties, because Icarus tried to fly too close to the sun. We tried to do the show both on uh, iTunes and, or to, uh, I, rather, uh, uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook at the same time, and the whole system blew. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, last night we started off the show with an interview with my ex-wife. And since I don't know if it really, you know, since we the whole show screwed up, I wanted to redo stuff tonight. And so let's replay that interview from last night with uh, the inimitable Ronnie Ben. Gentlemen, out there in Lake Oswego, Oregon, we go to visit with my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. Best ex-wife okay. I've ever had, by the way, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's what? You're the best ex-wife I've ever had. <laughs> but I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. You're the one that I still have an ongoing relationship with, which is nice. Is really nice. And uh, 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 Ronnie, we've told you in the past, has a touch of the cancer. So, a touch of the cancer? Touch of the cancer. It well, I, I, years ago, uh, little Richard, I don't know, maybe you were with me at the time, I was supposed to have him on as a guest, and he had to bait out, and the excuse he used was, I have a touch of the cancer. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> I and like I went, it. What the fuck I is it? a touch a of the cancer. What? Actually, I'm calling mine my predicament. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, if I have the prostate cancer thing, which is about an 85% chance I, I do, uh, it, it really in its own way is a touch of the cancer uh, because it's a, sm it's, it's a light cancer, okay, that they can take care of by medicine and hormones and things like that. But anyway, um, uh, no, I don't want to talk about health that much today, but uh, you asked me before we went on how am I and I told you I had a tooth removed and then you asked me am I going to get it replaced meaning am I going to get an implant you don't just no, grow I, and, well there you, are other kinds of replacement well I am going to get a replacement tomorrow it's what they call a clipper mm -hmm. and that just boom booms right and I used one of those the last time I had a tooth pulled and I was waiting for an implant and everything had to get better it takes like about three months before it heals enough that they can put in the implant and then another three months before they can say okay the implant is solidly in there and meanwhile you wear this this clipper this little uh, tooth that goes on like that <laughs> and i went uh I, I i enjoyed it so much that by the time it was time to get the implant i was questioning whether i wanted the implant or not because that was so easy every morning i just went clip and it it you know, it didn't bother me, and it felt like another tooth. So, and I figure, you know, I don't want to get an implant because at my age, how long am I going to be able to use it? You know, if I. Well, I mean, that that's what you have to weigh at our age. You know, is yeah. it worth probably a you know some amount of thousands of dollars, or not? Yeah. Which, which gets and us of around. There's no way to know. Well, which gets us around to your specialty about getting older, which is uh, featured in your uh, uh, blog at. Uh, Time goes by dot net. Uh, and that is, you know, there are things as you get older that you start weighing. If I were 50 right now, yeah, I'd get an implant in a heartbeat. Okay? I wouldn't even think twice about it. But at my age, I'm thinking, eh, I'm, okay, let's say I live to be 100. Then I'm wrong on this, okay? But I'm not, <laughs> I, I, my mother lived that long, but I don't think I'm going to have the same genetic. Uh, predilection okay so you have to question uh, do is it worth putting five thousand dollars worth of hardware in your mouth uh given your time left now if i were had tons of dough i guess i'd do it what the hell i got nothing else to do with my life right but uh you know at, at our age you have to weigh that against 
the longevity. So that's why you see old people with missing teeth a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I um, you know, one of the things, one of the first things I decided to get rid of when they first told me that I had this cancer was, oh goody, I never have to exercise again. I give that up. Well, now I've slightly gone back because they've extended my potential life a little bit, and I would like to be able to function. So I need a little exercise. So I'm going back to that. But another one was that unless I am in screaming pain. No more dentists. I have spent so many tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah, you, dentists, yeah, yeah, yeah. And no more. I'm done. You know, and speaking of implants, I consider tooth implants like cataract surgery the two, two of the most successful and fantastic things for old people. Um, what do you know that they can grow? Well, you know this because you've had it before. They can grow bone in there. Oh, yeah. We grow bone. Oh, yeah. And then you, that's what you wait the few months for, for it to get hard, and then they can put the implant in. I was just amazed. I had no idea we could do that. Well, uh, they they couldn't put the bone graft in my mouth because I had an infection. But he said at a later date, we can do the bone graft. Yeah. You know, yeah. they can do it at any point. And they just put it in there, and then it gets hard, and it, you know, eventually becomes bone. It's pretty amazing, just yeah. like cataract surgery. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. Just um, when I had, I guess it's four or five years ago that I had cataracts. I had surgery. them in both eyes. Um, and I have one for distance and one for close up, so I don't have to wear reading glasses. Yeah. And which is how I wore contact lenses for years and years. Yeah. And it was completely. I mean, it takes twenty minutes to to get your eye done or less, you know. And but then do you, you know that see. that operation, that cataract operation, years ago, wasn't that simple? I mean, well, we're uh, not living in years ago. Well, no, we're but I mean, now. it wasn't. It wasn't that simple. You used to have to sleep on a pillow for three months. It kept your head from moving. I mean, it was that difficult. I wasn't there then. I'm here now. And it, then I got mine, and you're right. It was like ten minutes, maybe fifteen minutes, okay. if 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 he really was at, at working too hard. Uh, or wasn't skilled enough. I had this one doctor. It is truly a miracle. I it's went into the uh, into the place, and there were like ten people all in chairs waiting to go in and have it done. And he did one after another, after another, after another, <laughs> after another. <laughs> know. You know, I mean, and it was all on a, like he did does it on a Wednesday, right? So when he walks out of there, he's made God knows how much money. But uh, wow. the cataract surgery I, works. I just think that it's such a miracle that we can do that other uh, people for centuries until this century until the 20th century went blind and there was nothing we could do for right. all that time right right and i can see like a brand new baby now you know yeah so i mean these are things that for instance for old people well most old people will wind up getting some kind of cataract surgery it's just you know it, it happens. All of a sudden, you notice this blurry spot in the middle of your eye, and you go, I better go see the eye doctor. And he goes, well, it's ripe. That's the term they use. It's ripe. Mine didn't, but uh, that's okay. Now, you know, if, if what your the title, the subtitle of your, uh, of your uh, blog is what it's like to get old. But it's really like it's to get It's really old. like to get old. And this is, these are facts of life that if people are listening to us, if you're young and you're listening to this and going, I don't need this, I don't need to hear about this, the fact of the matter is, yes, you do, because it's going to happen to you. No matter how you, how you parse it, it's going to happen to you. And, and um, so I, I often say, well, think of us as the Sacagawea of aging. You know, we're out in front of the Lewis and Clark party seeing the, the road ahead, as it were. And it's true. You don't think you're going to live this long. That, that's the first thing. You know, well, I always thought I was going to live forever. But, uh, and that's when you're a kid. Uh, that's why you do so many risky things. Uh, but as you get older, you never think you're going to get to this age. And then once you're to this age, now I realize why people are cranky. I realize, <laughs> you know, why, why we, uh, you know, it, all, all the things that we, we made fun about with aging. I, I move a little slower, you know. I think my voice hasn't really changed that much. I think no. my voice is kind of still remains somewhat youthful. If I didn't, 
have the stupidity of showing myself on this program, nobody would know how old I was, you know. And, mm. and, but then again, I start griping about things, and they know exactly how old I am. Well, you know, when you start talking about prostate cancer, people can guess. Uh, yeah, well, no, but prostate cancer, you can get, if you get it younger, then you got to have the prostate removed. If you get it older, they don't do that because it's a slower growing uh, prostate cancer. So it's different when you're, if you get it at 80, you're fine. You know, they'll treat yeah. it with hormones. They'll treat it with the, not radiation. They treat it with, they can do some chemical stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's manageable. Okay. There, the word they used to me was something else will get you. And I went, Oh, that's, that's nice. You know, my doctor said, I can keep you alive till you're 95. I said, well, that's fine. I said, but my mother lived to be 100. How are you going to deal with that one, pal? <laughs> you know. I don't think of how long our parents live have yeah. much to do with how long we live. Uh, let me ask you some questions about what's going on uh, politically in our country. Oh, uh, okay. I don't and, know. I've got any and, answers. And, and how it affects your older audience. I mean, it almost seems like they're trying to kill us old people. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the Republicans they, have been trying to do that since 1935. Yeah, but it, but it, but now they've got the power to do it. I mean, when you talk about making changes in Medicare, when you talk about making changes in Medicaid, you're talking about killing people. Yes, you are. And uh, I'm I'm wondering if we shouldn't get around and start killing them. I mean, I hate to be sound like some kind of assassin, but you know, isn't this a fight for life that we're fighting here now? And, and how do you stop them? Well, you have to elect the right people. It's a hard process in, in our form of government. It's very difficult. I, one of the questions this week or today and yesterday that I have is that the person in the office in the White House, one of the people in the office in the White House that approves, does the homework and research and approves or disapproves um, uh, <laughs> allowing you to see, uh, I, I'm having a chemo brain attack. Yeah, here, okay. Uh, that allows you to uh, have top secret clearance of some kind, you know, mm -hmm. one of those kinds. Um, rejected uh, J Jared Kushner, the president's son in law. And uh, then it was the headline this morning right. was that the White House ordered that man in that office that approves top secret clearances or secret clearances um, ordered him not to appear in the subpoena that was issued by the Democratic House to talk about how these people who were disapproved who did not have the proper good credentials to have a secret clearance mm -hmm were given it anyway at the order of the president. And now the president has ordered that that person not appear at the subpoena that was given him. Can a president do that? No, that's obstruction of justice. Well, no, 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 no don't, don't call that because nobody knows what that means right now. Yeah. And everybody has a different definition I don't of it. think he can, can do that. Can a president no. legally do that without no. all this mishmash of what we think obstruction of justice you see the trouble with trump is he mixes up running a business which he didn't do very well with running that's the country that's not my question no, Alex. But, that's really well, not my well, question well the answer to the question, question is, is no is very narrow. i don't i don't is think it's legal for him to do that i don't think so and how do we find because certainly nobody in the media has asked that question this morning yeah i yeah. can find yeah yeah uh, uh is that mcgann you're thinking of no, it's not again. It's another person in that's a separate subpoena. Yeah. Different one that apparently he is going to honor. But this is a person in the office who's been there through past administrations that works on clearances for secret yeah, yeah. you know, uh, whatever you call that thing. Help me with my chemo brain. <laughs> yeah, well, the clearances. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, you know, for for uh, FBI and so on. Hell, I I had a top secret clearance in the military. I got it. But then again, I'm no Jared Kushner. Uh, you know. By the way, did you see well, what he? This morning did you, there was a, he was being yeah, interviewed somewhere yeah. this morning, uh, and said that a couple 
a couple of ads on Facebook refer, referring to ones from right. Russia. Yeah. Don't really matter. Compared right. to compared to the really, damage that was matter. the damage that was done going after Trump. That's how he he put it. You know, it doesn't equal a couple of Facebook ads. That's right. how he put it. A couple of Facebook ads, folks. You know, I mean, let's face it, uh, Jared. Your father-in-law is in the White House right now because somebody gamed the system. Okay, period. That's it. He's he. To begin with, he didn't win. He lost by about three million votes. But secondly, he uh, he gamed the, the gamed the system, and um, allowed others to do it for him, including the Russians. I mean, he didn't go when he heard that the Russians were doing something. Go to the Russians and say, "Stop doing that," and then go to the FBI and say, "Guess what they've tried to do to me." He didn't do any of that. He just it just was kind of a benign neglect because he knew it was to his benefit. You know, I, I don't know if it was benign neglect. I think it was more serious than that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and what's what some people have been talking about, and I agree with, is that after, what is it, three and a half years, if you count the campaign, yeah. that we've been subjected to this, um, this person, this crude, awful person. Even if he didn't do anything that we think is illegal, he's just... Off. <laughs> he's he's off. a terrible person, and uh, and he's our president. I mean, how you just don't know how that can happen. You, you know what gets me about him most of all is what I call his Mussolini face. Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a look that he has of sternness that kind of looks like Mussolini. Mussolini oh, okay, used to take well, that posture. I, I I haven't seen enough photographs of Mussolini apparently, um, but. Uh, but what's happened in these three, three and a half years is that his behavior has become normal and we aren't outraged anymore. And, and I mean, think if Obama had even said one of the awful things that Trump said. If he had said. said one of the words he said, I mean, he used bullshit the other day. If, well, if, everybody's done if, that if, if Obama had used the word bullshit, they would have gone apoplectic. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, and now the whole argument about impeachment, I, I don't have any opinion on, I can't make sense of for myself. No, no. Of whether it's the right well, thing to do Well, I've come to the not. determination that if you started the impeachment today, it wouldn't be over till the election or past the election, so why even start it now? <clears throat> you know, it's really a waste of our time. Better to put our efforts into not getting him reelected. That's the best form of impeachment. Yeah. Well, there are some people arguing that an impeachment hearing, as opposed to the actual impeachment vote itself, mm -hmm. would educate the country further about what he's been doing that is not, if not illegal, is not right. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We got a bunch, of, we got more candidates on the Democratic oh, side. Somebody that, please go home. It's like a gangbang. You know, yeah. it's really it's it's and then uh, it looks like Biden's going to be in it on uh, on, on Thursday, Thursday. Uh, and um, which I think is a mistake personally. But let him go ahead and try. Uh, but which one of these candidates would be best for your readers, your your older audience that reads your blog? Which of these candidates is speaking best to their needs? I don't want to select a candidate based on anything that narrow it would be the same as doing it for uh, how I felt about abortion or gun ownership and that sort of thing. The country needs help, the whole country, include old people, young people, everybody. Yeah. And, um, and the person, I mean, I'm not making any decisions yet, but, and, you know, we've got all the primaries to go through, which will change everything. But, I'm really impressed with that guy whose last name I can't pronounce. I, I was going to say the same thing. He is my favorite of the whole bunch. I mean, he's really, he's smart. He's thoughtful. He's put a whole lot of work into his positions. He's a reasonable human being. You know, the other one who's about his age that 
got a little ahead of him for a while. The one who always stands on tables and does this while he's talking. Yeah, you know? but, but he's a little bit too volatile. He, he, he was for too me. goofy. <laughs> he was too goofy. But this guy, I think, could be the Trump killer. And here's why I think he could be the Trump killer. What can Trump say about him? I mean, he's gay, but he can't go after that because he's so openly gay that the president would look kind of like homophobic if he even said anything about it. I don't think he cares, though. You he doesn't care what he looks like to people. But, but look, you got a guy here who went to Harvard, right? Speaks <clears throat> nine languages, I think it is. I know! It's that amazing. By the way, plays the piano. I just thought I'd throw that one in as, a, right. a, as another plus. Uh, he served two tours in Afghanistan, all right? What in the world can Trump say bad about this guy? I mean, he's only, what, he's 36, 37, and he's truly a renaissance man. Oh, by the way, Trump can't say he hasn't had experience because he's had more experience than Trump did. Trump did, right, yes. But, of course, Trump, it doesn't matter to Trump what he says, whether it's a lie or not. He just keeps saying it anyway. Yeah. uh, uh, I just, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm not ready to make a pick yet, but I hope... People pay attention to him. I think he's quite oh, a brilliant he's, man. He's, he's like a number. And he's not, you know, yeah. you know. I I always kind of liked Al Gore, but he was kind of above it all. Mm-hmm. And Mayor Pete is not above it all. Right. And um, and I just I just think he's so incredibly sane, has so many good ideas, has really put thought into it, cares about the country. Um, is a reasonable human being when he stands up there and talks. You, know? <laughs> you and I both agree on this, you know, and I look at all the other candidates and I go, you know, am I wrong for saying, for instance, that um, Biden's too old? Um, uh, what's his name um, uh, from uh, Vermont? Uh, Bernie Sanders. Too, uh, I think too old for the job. I think now, 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 give me the reason behind the too old. Okay, too old is I know how I am at seventy nine. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know that I would have the strength day to day to go through that thing as as easily as a younger person would. I mean, I think uh, Mayor Pete, if he became president, would st- start uh, hit the ground running. Okay. Uh, Biden would hit the ground walking. <laughs> All right. No, I a- don't. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, but um, I, 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 I agree with you about the day-to-day work. I mean, you wouldn't know it from President Trump, but it's hard work to be a real president. He's not a real president. Right. Trump. Right. But to be a real and by the way, there's something I've been meaning to bring up with people. I've, talking politics with um is do you remember the days <laughs> now this is a stretch after three years of trump yeah but do you remember the days when we never heard anything about the president unless he signed something or met a dignitary uh, he went about his business in the white house yeah once in a while he went to the rose garden to sign something or he had the head of another country come to visit and we saw pretty pictures of the state dinner and that sort of thing but unless he did something big, he went about his business oh, uh, and we went we, about ours. All we, we have didn't to, hear from all him we have every to do, day. All we have to do for that is go back to Obama. I mean, you yes. heard from Obama about maybe once every week, right? Meanwhile, he was just doing the job. And by the way, I think the perfect age for being president, because he never looked winded from the job. He never looked <laughs> exhausted from the job. On the other hand... He was old enough to have the life experience to take care of a lot of the things that he mm-hmm. did. And he didn't start out being a great president, but I think by the end of his two terms, I think he learned how to be a pretty good one. Well, yeah. that seems to be the way we do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, let's face it. It is an earn-while-you-learn job. Nobody else has ha- you know, has that job prior to having that job unless it's a re-election. Uh, and and so, uh, you know, for instance, Pete, Mayor Pete has better experience because at least he knows budgets and, you know, having to deal with uh, with running a uh, a government uh, a bureaucracy. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, I don't think even Ob- Obama had that ability because he was a senator. 
you know, governors usually make the best presidents in a lot of cases because they've had to go through those same procedures, just now amped up to a whole country. Get what I'm saying? So, anyway, I, 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 you know, I was watching today, I was watching Kirsten Gillibrand, who I have absolutely no love for after what she did to, uh, uh, what's his name, um, the, um, the guy from Saturday Night Live, Franken. Franken, uh, yes. After what she did to Franken, I consider her the worst of all possible human beings and, and was guilty of eating our own and took a really good lefty out of, the, out of, the, out of play. Uh, but she was on today with Andrea Mitchell, and I watched her, and I just said, give up. Don't even run. Don't even try. You, haven't even, you, you can't even get out of the gate. You haven't got the, 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 the if she doesn't talk things like you want to hear she doesn't look very good i mean all the things oh, that, oh, 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 back oh, up. Why listen, does this look very good? oh look very good is very important because today we're living in a televised age and it's important I think she looks like a perfectly fine woman uh she looks like a perfectly fine woman but her her looks are a little on the severe side you know but if the guy there are guys that have never smiled in Congress, and you don't object to their looks. Well, I'm not. I'm not objecting to her looks from a look standpoint. I'm saying that all of politics now is cosmetic as well as it is political. You know that. That's one of the reasons we kind of like Mayor Pete. He's young. He's youthful. We like. He looks good. You know. He speaks well. You know. So yes, he is television worthy. Um. I'm trying to think who else is television worthy. Uh, not a lot of them, believe it or not. They all are. Huh? They all are. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I, but I just think, I, 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 I'm looking at who can win. And I think Mayor Pete could win. <laughs> I think he could win. And I think he could win because... Do you think people our age in large enough numbers, and we're the largest vote, voting block, yeah. do you think they would vote for someone his age? Uh, I think they would get behind him, yes. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, here, here's what it comes down to. But you it, know, no. most people 65 and older who vote are Republicans. Okay, but here's what it gets down to. It gets down to the message. What are you saying to the people and how convincing are you in what you're saying? And you can get into some of that Republican block by appealing to those people and their needs as well as those of the people on the left, okay? So it, it's a matter of message. And it's a, and I, you know, I think a lot of older women would look at him and say, he's so cute, I think I'll vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a nice boy. Looks just like my Plus, son, Plus, right? I'm going to say one other thing, and this this has to do with the homophobia in this country, which would be a problem a little bit for Mayor, P Mayor Pete, and that is that uh, he doesn't come across as being particularly gay or straight. He comes across just as Mayor Pete, you know? There's not that fey quality that some gays would bring to it. He's just, you know... He, yeah, I mean he looks good. He looks good enough to be gay, but <laughs> outside of that, you know, I don't. We we could have a long conversation about what looks gay or not. Well, yeah, you, uh, believe me, I can point to some people, and and you can get a guy from the Himalayas who will point to him and go gay. You know, I mean, but in the case of Mayor Pete, he doesn't. He's not the kind. He he's almost like Obama in that Obama was a black guy who really didn't exude blackness okay when he at least when he was running he kind of he he was the kind I, Alex, I gotta interrupt you i can't wait until people see this tape. <laughs> <laughs> i'm talking look i'm talking what i'm talking about here ronnie is i'm talking about perception okay and what people feel comfortable with i've got to say that obama was a black guy who a lot of white people could be, feel very comfortable with okay if you uh, um, uh, had another black guy who was very black, I mean, had really a, a, a real black patois to him, I think that he would have had a harder time. I think that there was a kind of thing about it. Well, he's, you know, he his mother was half was white, so he's half white. They kind of that that worked for him, 
that worked for him with those white people who might go, eh, black guy is president? Yeah, you know. So, I mean, all I'm saying is it's all perception. It's all perception about whether you look gay, you act gay. You know, but yet he in public kisses his husband. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful message. And I think if he can keep doing that and get away with it and sell it to America, they'll go, well, you know, being gay ain't so bad. You know, but love is love. Yeah. Yeah. From your lips to God's ears. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm not sure about him yet, but of all those, what is it, 674 Democrats who are running, um, he's my favorite so far. Yeah. I'm glad you feel that and, way. And because... I would not not vote. If, if it came down to Trump versus Bernie mm -hmm. uh, or or Biden, I'd have no trouble voting for the for either of them instead, yeah. Yeah. age or not. Um, hey. I, Trump is dangerous. They're just old. We've run out of time. In fact, we've run over by about five minutes. This may be the longest one we've done. Uh, which shows all the spunk you have going and the uh, elan and whatever. And uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of people will have enjoyed what we talked about today because they love the politics. They're eager for the politics. They're hooked on <laughs> politics. Anyway, you can find Ronnie Bennett at timegoesby.net. Anything else that you're cooking up? Not right now, no. I have to go grocery shopping. What a bore. Okay, know? and I got to go work out, so what a bore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I get on a bike and I go <laughs> nowhere. Anyway, Ronnie, good talk to you. Talk to you in a couple of weeks. Okay, take good care. Bye-bye. Bye. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was, of course, Ronnie Bennett. That is my, uh, in case you're not familiar with her, she's my ex-wife, and uh, we we talk a lot. Uh, I was reading some of the comments on her uh, on her uh, blog, and some some of her people did not like me in this interview. By the way, I'm sorry I had to start it over again. I don't like to tell you how we make the sausage here or how we kill the pig, but. Um, what happens is I'm using a system here where I, I wish I could just pick up where I left off, and maybe I'm, I may set it so that I can do that, you know. Uh, I have to check that tomorrow. But, it, but it, it's hard. I can't zip it forward to the place where we left off, so I had to start from the beginning, and that was about three minutes worth. So I'm sorry. I pushed something here while I was doing something else, and uh, yeah, it's, it's all, you know. You don't want to know how the sausage is made, okay? Oh, God, but I have to know. Oh, anyway, um, and I'm a little out of it. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I had to take pills and so on. Let me, let me go online here. Uh, I got a little something to talk about once I get people here. But we're, uh, we're, our, the Skype lines are now open. The Skype lines are open. And uh, we're ready for people to uh, start uh, calling us. And uh, we'll see what what happens here. Ah, if we can, uh, if we can get everybody uh, in order. Uh, uh, last night we had a real problem. And it doesn't, whoops, oops. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay, now I go and I got to put somebody up here on the page. There we. go. Go, scuba diver goes there and then I go there and there we go and it looks like we're doing okay tonight it, uh, we're not having having the problems we had last night but boy did we have problems last night yeah well you worked them out yeah we worked them out here comes somebody named Eddie Jordan do we know Eddie Jordan uh, I think his brother plays basketball uh, he plays basketball okay <laughs> hold, on, hold on a second I got a no, it's not Michael Jordan. Okay, hold hold on a second, Eddie. Uh, I just got to get you uh, on a, on a on this uh, uh, panel. Uh, let me see here. Come on, do it. There, the Eddie Jordan. Okay, wait a minute. Here comes Chris Wallace, and um, uh, we got to do that. And then we got Chris and uh, or Charlie rather. What am I saying, Chris Wallace? 
Oh, that, there that's is that commie on TV, right? Is that commie on TV, Charles Wallace. Yeah, wait a minute, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. How do I? Well, hold on a second. Uh, I'm okay. here. I know you're there. I know you're there. Uh, we don't have a picture on you, though. That's the reason why I couldn't do it. Okay, now we wow. should be okay. And there's Charlie. Okay, there's our citizen panel so far. Wow. And I Triple. think, and I think we're fine. I don't think we have a problem tonight. You know what I found out? I I don't want to talk too much technical on how this show's done, but I figured out what happened last night. I was Icarus, and I flew too close to the sun. Okay, um, I, um, I I decided that I was going to do the show. Okay, uh, and uh, I was going to put it out on YouTube as I always do, and then through another machine, I was going to put it out on Facebook. And for that, I had to use a pro program I used to get you guys on the screen called NDI, and that goes to the other machine. Well, I found out last night, I don't think you can have pictures coming and going at the same time. So I know now never to do that again. Uh, hello there. Uh, do, do, have you been on the show before, Mr. Jordan? Yeah, I called from a uh, how long ago. How long ago? Well, maybe three weeks. Uh, oh, his right. his mic is got. Uh, I don't know if he's on his right mic. Uh, I, uh, yeah, you some. You hear me? No, uh, I, we hear you, but it sounds like you're way far away. Uh, uh, he's heading home. Have you got your mic set properly in Skype? I don't know. I've never used Skype before. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, said he called from Thailand. He said, and I remember that. Oh, okay. All right. Would uh, it be better if I didn't? Well, yeah, probably. It, it, probably. Uh, uh, but the thing is that uh, what? Oh boy. Uh, uh, what? Do you, 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 let's see here. What? What? How do we tell him how to do this, uh, Phil? Uh, well, uh, let's see what happens now that he's ditched the earphones. Okay. okay. How's this? Is this better? Much better. Much better. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah. You got yeah. a winner. Oh, okay. All righty. They, they get the mic in the. Uh, in the earpiece somewhere. But yeah, I see. That was the problem. Thank you for listening before. Yeah. Now you called us from you called us from Thailand, right? Right. And I couldn't could hardly communicate, so we just kind of cut it short last time. About uh, three weeks. I, mean, I got to put on my glasses. I can't see anything here. So what were you doing in Thailand? Um, my wife is Thai, and we were <coughs> visiting her family. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me see. Uh, do they live in a main area or in a village? Um, pretty much a village outside of uh, Pitsanulok, which is, is north. Oh, Pitsanulok. I, I know that. That's just next to Poughkeepsie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patrick, call us back again. I did something yeah. wrong or something, and I it's didn't like get six you. six-hour drive from you. Bangkok if you want to have her in the neighborhood. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this guy I know lives a, a, a little ways out of uh, Karach, and he's the only uh, w white person in the village, and he married a Thai gal. So where are you, where are you calling from right now? Thailand as well? No, Vallejo, California. Oh, Vallejo, California. Okay. Another exotic par port of call. Yeah. 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 I'm down the street in Walnut Creek. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Patrick, if you or if you're out there, call again. I don't know what happened to the call. There we go. Here comes Patrick again. All right. Now I push the button, and Patrick should be brought in. There we go. We're yes. Okay. Now I need to. I need. Looks to, like uh, Patrick. Huh? Yeah. Looks like Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Once I got. You know, I've also gotten used to these names like Darth Pat that he uses. You know. Hello, Patrick. How are you this evening? I'm super dandy. And and look, it's 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 all working. Okay, all right. Uh, it doesn't look like we're freezing up or anything like that. So uh, I'm I'm fine. Okay. Uh, so um, you're also pretty much in sync. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. 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 With the yeah. YouTube. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, well, I, yeah. Just I'm getting all this stuff solved, right? And and probably a day or two, I'm getting my machine back. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, what did I do it for? You know, now, well, now you know the now, settings when you set the machine back. Well, up. no, I know I don't know the settings because what I do is I take the backup t t disk that I have 
and yeah. I back it up, and so the machine will then open up like it was before I even took it to the store. So uh, all the old settings will be there, and I have to learn them all over again. So <laughs> anyway, let me tell you a story. So I had this tooth removed, right? And I was looking very forward to getting a this thing they call a clipper. clipper. Yeah, it's you know it's fake fake tooth. Uh, and uh, I I talked to my this woman who's been my dentist, and she just I think overcharges me on everything. So Marjorie's been seeing this new dentist. So I called them up and I said, "How much would this kind of thing cost me?" And they said, "About four hundred, five hundred dollars." Well, my doctor had said 875, all right? So I said, I'm making an appointment with you. So I called my old dentist and said, I'm going to somebody else because they can do it cheaper. So now I go to see this dentist. And I was just talking to the woman in the office. And I go and I sit with the person in the, de the dentist and, and I say to her, so I, need, I want a clipper. And she says, well, we don't, uh, we don't do clippers anymore. I said, what? what do you mean you don't do clippers anymore? And she said, we don't do clippers anymore because uh, they, it, years ago we found that they caused uh, several kinds of problems, not the least of which is you could swallow them and choke. <laughs> okay? And so I'm not, I, I won't do a clipper. I won't do that for you. But what we could do is, of course, a bridge. And then she looked at my mouth and she said, well, we have to see if those two teeth are healthy on either side to be able to take out uh, to put a crown on, you know, because you take a, a bridge is like the tooth plus a crown on either side and then put in there. And I went, uh, and I'm thinking, boy, the, now this is starting to cost money. And how and much I, difference I, and is I it said, in well, an implant? I said, well, this one, well, let me finish. I said, this one isn't, uh, now this tooth, I said, is not a, you don't have to worry about that tooth. That, that, that's good to go because that's an implant. And she says, oh, then we can't do a bridge. Because what they have to do is they have to take off the crown from the implant, which is a special kind of crown, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and they, they couldn't do that. And then she looked at the other tooth and she said, well, it's a little, it's a little weak. Uh, she said, that tooth's maybe got another 10 years in it. And I figure I don't have 10 years, so, you know. And she said, but we, even if it were perfect, and she said, we can't do it because the other tooth is an implant. I said, so what's the only option? She said, Impl uh, uh, implant. Yeah. What's her price? Uh, much cheaper. Really? Oh. Well, uh, much cheaper is I spent close to 5500 maybe closer to 6000 the last time I had an uh, uh, implant put in. Uh -huh. uh, uh, my doctor charged me, uh, first of all, 2500 to put the implant in. Okay. And that included three hundred for a CT scan, so that took it up to twenty eight hundred. They say they can do the implant for eighteen hundred. Mm. Okay, a little bit difference in price. Also, then the actual tooth itself, the crown, the abutment uh, that goes on there, uh, is another eight hundred, and then the crown is fifteen hundred. And my dentist charged me two thousand for the crown. Yeah. Did and, they and, tell you that they only had canine teeth? Well, they told available? me it, they told me it would only it would only come out to uh, it come out to four thousand dollars. Now I imagine a bridge would cost two two grand at least, but we, they can't do a bridge. The only thing they can do is an implant. It's going to cost close to ten bucks to get across the Golden Gate pretty soon. So. You know, that's yeah. not bad. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that the problem is, is I have no choice but to get an implant, which is the thing I didn't want, or go back to my old dentist and get a clipper, yeah. clipper and choke to death. You know, so, uh, you know, who knows? You know, there's some kind of crosstalk going on here. I don't know who it's coming from. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't care. I, you know. Uh, but That's anyway, tech stuff. So anyway, that was my. Well, this isn't tech stuff. This is dental stuff. No, no, stuff. cross talk is tech. And uh, but you know, I uh, it, it, she, they can do it for about four thousand dollars, and so uh, Marjorie is going to loan me the money from a uh, from her uh, house loan or whatever her what do you call it loan that she has, and uh, we'll uh, and and my my uh, my insurance will take care of half of it. 
So, you know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get the implant. But I, I don't have to do it now. i got to wait three months from this mouth to cure anyway. So, you know. We'll just sit Are around. they going to need to grow any bone or anything? Well, uh, it, it, she said no, that wasn't necessarily needed. They do it, but it wasn't necessarily needed. They can, they can do it though. I mean, I'll 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 talk to her and see what the uh, what the story is. But she said no, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's something they do because it's good, nice to do, you know. But uh, well, maybe, maybe they need you know sometimes bone recedes. And you have a bad tooth, yeah. and they need something to drill into. To yeah, put she the said stunt. it looked like they could get the thing in there and everything, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I but uh, but I you know I'll, I'll talk to her more about it. We're waiting. We're waiting for Delta to get back to us with the price, because they now, also how, mu how much is an implant in Thailand? You know, <laughs> uh, you know people go to Thailand just to get medical work done. Yeah, Eddie. How much does it cost in Thailand? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. I know it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Luckily, I've, I've only I went to the emergency room once or uh, urgent care one time when I was there. Yeah. And um, I got walked through because I was having like back spasms from being on the plane and then a train and then a minivan and all this. Yeah. And uh, I was sat in the waiting room like five minutes, went back, saw the doctor, <clears throat> relaxed her shot, got took to the uh, pharmacy. My medicine was waiting there for me with a bill for like $35. Wow. wow. Yeah. How, come, how come everybody has be better medical care than we do? And they're, they're... Uh, that's, that's because they're all a bunch of con men, and they're all raping the system. Oh, I and, see. And, I see. And we're their yeah. marks. Yeah, I see. Yep. Oh, you mean here? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I think it's it's nice to have a dentist who at least is giving me some kind of a reasonable price and also <laughs> my dentist who sent all my bills off to Delta Dental so I could get money back I think never had anything going with Delta Dental because what they want to do is call De Delta Dental and see what Delta Dental feels the right price is you get a discount on your tooth work if you have dental insurance like this tooth to get it pulled was going to cost seven fifty, but it was only five hundred because I I had Delta Dental. So you know, and then part of that gets paid back by Delta Dental. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what the price comes out to. But uh, uh, it's it's an ongoing procedure, and I'll probably go to her and have my teeth cleaned. What the hell, you know? Get the X-rays done. You can always get them sharpened. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the only reason I didn't want to get an implant is if I were 50 years old, I'd get an implant in a second, you know. But I'm, I'm 79 years old. I could get an implant uh, in another six months, and by December I could be dead, you know. So, I mean, I, I you know. I, that's I, nice. I, Can you donate <laughs> those implants to, uh, Jeff to says someone that's else? nice. What? <coughs> no, no. Mm -mm. You know, like you can with corneas and. Here's the other part that bothers me, okay? I've already got two implants, all right? Uh, I die. I'm rotting in my grave. At some point, maybe they want, to do, they want to dig me up, and I'm nothing but dust except for the implants. They're still there. They're still around. I always around. thought teeth stay, uh, last a long time. I think yeah. so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, anyway. Well, you can say your dentist screwed you. You know, ha, <laughs> you know, so anyway, uh, uh, so I, um, uh, so uh, is there any, what, what, anything happening in the news? I mean, besides uh, Trump bitching and moaning? I guess uh, Kim Jong-un is being entertained in Moscow by uh, Vladimir Putin. Oh. Uh, isn't, uh, did he arrive there uh, already? I have no uh, idea. They, they I were having some sort of summit. I, I didn't know he was going because I watch MSNBC and they don't cover that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay. All, you know, all they ever cover is something to bitch and moan about Trump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't Trump jealous that Un's going to Moscow? No, yeah, but, no, uh, Trump no, is no. I mean, Trump in, should. Uh, he's visiting the Queen, and now there's some sort of controversy as to whether he's going to speak to Parliament. Uh. So, you know, that's here. I'll on. tell you something I saw the other day that really kind of bothered me. 
uh, and, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but they had the they had the Easter Bunny on the uh, lawn of the White House, which next to Melania and Donald really looked bizarre, because this wasn't just your normal Easter rabbit. This one obviously has visual pro vision problems because he's wearing glasses. And luckily it wasn't Biden. And Trump gets up there and he goes, and I want to welcome the kids and their families to a 147-year tradition. I want to thank Melania for getting it together so well. And I thought, okay, that's nice. You know, a moment out from politics to just have a romp on the, on the, on the lawn of the White House. And then he, what is that crosstalk? Jeez. That's a, some, something's out there. Something is out there. I don't know what. Mm. But anyway, um, and then all of a sudden, he breaks out into this speech about how the economy's been the best it ever has been and how the, you know, the wall's getting built and this and that, and he starts talking about all his achievements. That was highly inappropriate considering the circumstances. You know, that's not the time to give a political speech. But he and he went on for 10. I don't know if you saw it, but he went on for like 10, 15 minutes with this. How wonderful I am and how wonderful I've been at doing stuff. Meanwhile, flanked by this bunny rabbit with glasses on. It was bizarre. It was just bizarre. What, what are you looking at, Phil? Oh, I was just looking at uh, at the uh, North Korea uh, upbeat as he arrives for Putin's summit. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I imagine Trump could go and he could blow Putin off while he's there. You know, <laughs> no, we'll see what happens. But no, yeah, I just I, found that. I, don't you find that a little bizarre, Phil? Don't you think that's the wrong place to politicize? Uh, you mean the Easter roll? Yeah. Uh, no. No, why? Yeah. Why? Well, there's a lot of kids there, and you know, you got to tell them what you've done. You know, they want to know. <laughs> they want to know. Yeah, so they'll yeah. vote for you in the next election. Yeah. I see. Well, you know, well, oh, they can't vote unless they're felons. That's that's right. And in prison, uh, then then they can mm -hmm. vote uh, per Bernie. Well, Sanders. I think I think it's. Uh, let's see here. Where where do we have? Uh, where, where do we have? Uh, uh, I'm looking for where we have uh, Tony. Hold on a second. Let me... I heard about your implant that was in my room. That's crazy. We should have free dental. Oh, of course we should have free. We should have free everything. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Tony. And, and, yeah. and now my dentist, Alex, he goes like this. Oh, the teeth look good. He goes, but I could do like a bridge on top for four grand. I'm like, get the hell. Oh, I see. A bridge is four grand. <laughs> you want to get caps. He says, you don't have to pay at once. He says, I'm not paying at all, I'm saying to myself. <laughs> I'm not, I, what, what, yeah, no. Uh, she, well, they wanted me. Uh, I, they said, you, you, you have to, I have to have a bridge for this tooth. <laughs> But then, yeah, but no, but then they then they said that I I can't have a bridge because on one side I have an implant. Oh, thank God! I went out and got this wonderful implant Good. so that I couldn't get a middle tooth here. I said, what am I looking for? He's so I'm walking I'm bridge. walking around with missing a tooth, and you know what that means? I have means to vote your for next life. That I have to you vote. For, start no, flossing. no, I said I have to vote for Trump. You know well, because okay. I'm missing a tooth. It's required in America that if you miss a tooth, you have to vote for Trump. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll, I'll look that one up on Snopes. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 you will find it on Snopes too. It's, it's... I, I didn't say anything. I just was like, okay, yeah, probably that price. Yeah, I'm not paying. I left that dentist. I'm not giving him anything. I said. Yeah. <laughs> well, tonight everything's perfect. I'm not out of sync. I'm, you know, I'm. My lips are moving at the same time I talk. Everything's going out okay. Uh, uh, thank goodness. The only thing that went wrong was I accidentally stopped the interview with Ronnie and had to start it over again. But if that's the worst that happens tonight, I'm okay with that. Wow. Um, Notre Dame, what? they found cigarette butts. It seems that the scaffolding people said that the workers were smoking. And that's maybe what burned down an 850-year-old building. I bet you they weren't union workers, Phil. <laughs> in, in France, they're all union. Yeah. Never know. Maybe the church was taking a cheap way out. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's well, for sure. Well, you know, the, uh, the, the, to begin with, the, the, that place was a tinderbox. Oh, was it? Oh, oh, yeah, that roof area was very, very much a tinderbox. But if you look mm -hmm. at what happened, 
It's really the roof that burned. And the spire fell down, but the spire is only about 100 and some odd years old. It's fairly new. Yeah, well, they, they said that uh, the, the building was built uh, over a 200-year period starting the 12th century. So it was probably a union job if it took 200 years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and socialism made it go even slower. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, why should they work? Do you realize that that was around when they were chopping heads off with guillotines during the French Revolution? I mean, yeah. that, that thing's yeah. been around for a long time. And I think pretty much the frame, the stone frame around it is pretty much intact. And it looks mm -hmm. like the damage to the inside is basically the roof that fell in. So it's that's an engineering marvel. Uh, those things are called flying buttresses. They're flying buttresses, yeah. Yeah, yeah they... And, they uh, they, they were invented for that particular they edifice, built, right. and from then on yeah. became the, uh, the way mm. you built churches in those days. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Very good architectural understanding. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You know, and I bet they had medical insurance, too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> they're going to need it. <laughs> um, uh, what, what do you think about this guy, uh, the, uh, Phil? I want to know. i got to get your take on this, because I don't know why mm. i got to get your take on it. <laughs> I got to get your take on it. What, uh, what, is the, uh, what, what, what do you think of the guy uh, in, uh, in, uh, down by the Mexican border who's the head of the, this militia who they arrested? Uh, well, got somebody. well uh, he's, uh, he's a private citizen. Yeah. And he's holding people. Oh, also, he's an ex-felon, ex I might add. Oh, wow, really? So he shouldn't be in the possession of a firearm. That's correct. Except if Bernie gets elected, you can't have a firearm, but you can you can use a uh, a bomb, kill people in uh, at the Boston Marathon, and still get the vote. From well, that, she didn't let the job vote. Wait a minute, Phil. What was that, that all about? That made uh, no at sense. The CNN. Uh, uh, there was a town hall the other day, uh -huh. and yeah. Bernie was asked, uh, "Do you think that uh, felons should get the vote?" And he said, not only should they get the vote, but it, the, uh, then they said, what if it's a, a murderer like uh, a, a terrorist like Zernayoff? And he says he should be able to vote, too. Well, so, I mean, you can't. Phil, Phil, if you're going if you're going to believe that felons have the right to vote. And by the way, the very conservative state of Florida has voted that that should be so. But not while they're in prison. Uh Okay. When they get out of oh, was, prison, did they ask uh, Bernie if uh, they, if while they were in prison, should they get yes. the vote? Yes, yes, yeah. and he said yes. I agree. Oh yeah, yes, so I, yeah, I, yeah I, I, let's I'm, get a couple I'm, of terrorists uh, in there voting. Yeah, well, well they, they still get the vote. Oh, uh, you know that Ber Bernie really shot himself in the foot over that one. Well, I just the think the Constitution does it say because you got convicted of a crime, you can't vote. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Constitution. No, you, but it does say uh, you can possess a firearm if you're an American citizen. Can I tell you a very interesting story? A few many years back. You all know who Jack Benny and George Burns were. Oh, I love right? Jack Benny. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a fella. Well, they were best of friends. And they went to France. And uh, they on vacation. And while they were in France, uh, 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 George, who was always looking for a deal, said, listen, I know a guy who's, an on, who's a diplomat here in, American diplomat here in Paris, and if we buy some jewelry and stuff, he can take it back in his diplomatic pouch, oh, and there's no way they can go through his diplomatic pouch, and 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 we won't have to pay uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, import taxes. Booty. Booty. Can you save, maybe they could save money. Import taxes. Okay. So so they went and they bought these things for Mary and for uh, for for Gracie, and. Um, they put, gave him to the guy, and he put it in his pouch, and they went back to the United States. And uh, it seems they stopped the guy, and they looked in his pouch, and they found this stuff, and they said, what's that? And he said, uh, well, Jack Benny and, 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 and George Burns. Next thing you know, they arrest Benny and Burns and the charge, them, charge them with smuggling, okay, <laughs> which is a felony. Yeah, nice. Um, George Burns immediately pleads guilty and gets a year and a day, which means if he got a year and a day, you don't it's get to ever vote again. 
or own a gun. And then it was a suspended sentence. Benny, on the other hand, held out. He was kind of the Lori Laughlin of the group. He held out, <laughs> and he didn't uh, do it for, for a while, and finally he admitted <laughs> that he was guilty, and they charged him and gave him a year and a day suspended. Okay? Neither of them she could ever vote again. Ne neither of them could ever vote again. Mm. Well, so yeah. you do lose your right then yeah. if you get arrested. So I was I, I often wanted to make a movie called the big the Benny Burns uh, the, the Benny Burns caper, you know, about <laughs> this know. this crime they committed because I I was told the story by Shecky and right. I didn't believe it and he sent I me a, a copy of an item from the New York Times that said that mm. Jack Benny today just pleaded guilty his friend George I Burns like did a few <laughs> months ago. Right. And and it told the whole story of what was uh, what, what what went on, so that's the great Benny Burns caper. So imagine if Jack had to go to jail, Alex. He never would have lasted. He would have got right out. They yeah. could never hold him in there. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> he could have yeah. entertained them. He would know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, so they, they did. The ladies get the jewelry. No, they that's didn't. It no, it was confiscated. <laughs> it was confiscated. Yeah. I always thought that was a great unknown story about Benny and Burns, that they yeah. were both felons. Mm. Yeah. And look how great they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, how great uh, they were. They're both dead, and that'll and show you. In Florida, that sh will show you what fame gets you. Eventually, you drop dead. Okay. Yeah, but I still love them. Huh? I, I like yeah. I like watch the show when on Saturday sometimes I got the DVD. Yeah. I'm on the radio, Mom, with Alex. She's actually going to walk in the let me check on her now. We get all the she's like Boy, the this is so this is so Norman. This is now. so Norman Bates for crying out loud. You know, aren't you supposed this to be in the basement? Well, no, I know that I know Notre Dame old. burned down, so it's I go up and down like an I go up and down like an elevator. Hold on. Don't you sleep? <laughs> Now, his dad died, right? I'm trying to yeah. remember the whole story going on here. Yeah. He wanted to. Do you want us, uh, Ed, you know, Eddie, you I want us to keep father. you want to keep you up with this story with Tony? I, I think it was the father that made him stay in the basement. I, I've, I've listened to all your podcasts. So. Yeah, so you know what, what was up. His father died, and now he's taking care of his exactly. mother. And right. he has a job packing hats at a hat factory. But he is now trying to get a job being his mother's, uh, what, uh, caregiver. And the city will pay him money to be her caregiver. So he's trying to get that job. So that's why he runs off every now and then and says, you know, Mom, I just killed a woman down in the motel. Uh, You're next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, he won't kill her because he wants the job. Yeah, right. You know, it's important that she lives, you know. And, and if, but no, but here's what happens the Norman Bates thing. If she does die, and I'm saying this while he's not here, but if she does die, he'll probably stuff her and keep her in the other room so he can keep getting the money. Oh, yeah. Just put her in a chair. You know, that really should have been the story of Norman Bates. Not that he, yeah. you know, mom was stuffed because he wanted to get the money from the city to say it was her caregiver. Oh, hello, Tony. <laughs> Welcome back. She doesn't sleep. It's like go back in the coffin. <laughs> Tony, I if I had that wallpaper. Tony, check yet. Tony, if I had that wallpaper, I couldn't sleep either. I love her. Oh my God, she's trying. Hey, she's listen, worried. listen. I don't, I, I don't wish your mother ill, but if and when she does die, mm -hmm. and I think uh, there's a part of you that kind of yearns for that moment. Uh, well, not, uh, 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 the the first thing you should do. Before anything else has changed that fucking wallpaper. I know. Oh, it's <laughs> kind of bad, Alex. It's like from the seventies. From the seventies? I would say maybe that the looks 80s. like that looks like Just something. Uh, that looks like really that looks like wallpaper from the the honeymooners. Okay. You know? It doesn't even match. My brother said it's like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "What is this?" I said, "I don't know. We didn't pick it up." Nah, she's she's been doing better. I booked she's worse. Which time? I booked booked into a cheap hotel room in Paris once, uh -huh. and it had wallpaper like that on all sides of it and the ceiling. <laughs> and after about a day in that room, I was ready to kill somebody. It's hard to sleep up here sometimes. You know, in Paris, I feel like the walls are attacking me. <laughs> the cheap hotel rooms are very small. Could you touch the walls with your arms? Yes. You know. 
<laughs> yes, and it wasn't a cheap hotel room. What, 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 it, oh, was, never, what yeah. it was is I needed a hotel room for just one night. See, I have a theory. If you're going to get a hotel room in a foreign country and you're traveling around and it's for one night, you can you could sleep in the skeeziest room that exists, and it doesn't matter because you're going into that room, you're closing your eyes, you're going to sleep. The next thing you know, you're going to wake up, you're going to grab your luggage, you're going to go down to the car and get the hell out of there, right? So it doesn't matter really what the room is like. Now, if you're going to spend two days there, well, then you need a nicer room. And if you're going to spend a week there, you better go get yourself a beautiful, you know, setup. But... Uh, so uh, this was a case of uh, we were going to be in Paris overnight to catch the plane, and it was the first place we could find, and we said, okay, what the hell, what the fuck, you know. Although I was in a hotel room in Amsterdam once where I went to an orgy in Amsterdam. That's how far I'll travel to have sex. There was an orgy in Amsterdam, and my friend Al Goldstein said, you want to come with me? And I said, okay. So we, we go there, and by the way, we get to the orgy and nobody shows up. Now, can you imagine an orgy being so bad nobody will show up for it? You know. Well, we knew Al Goldstein would be there. Yeah, but anyway, Al says, I, I got us some hotel rooms. He said, oh, okay. So we go to this hotel, and it's a very nice hotel. And the, the guy then takes us up one floor, another floor, another floor. Finally, we're on the top floor, and now all the rooms look like shit. It was the worst rooms you've ever seen in your life. And Al says, well, I'll take this room over here. And I said, okay, I'll take this room over here. And it's got a skylight, but no curtain, no shade, nothing. And I'm trying to go to sleep during the day, and this thing is just blaring at me. That was... Finally, I think he found us another hotel room. I said, boy, I'm never letting you be my tour guide ever again. You know, and then you take me to an orgy and nobody's fucking. Come on. You know, what's that? It was called the Wet Dream Festival, for Christ's sake. Somebody should be fucking. So, anyway. Just another little wonderful part of my life, folks. By the way, I just put up uh, all the, uh, on the front page of GabNet, all my Life in the Passing Lanes. And you can play them right from that thing right there because there's a little little button you can push on each episode and it will play it. And you can scroll through them. And it's, it looks pretty good, actually. So, uh, yeah, whatever. So, uh, uh, so you know, um, I, there was a very good article in the New York Times yesterday. And Marjorie read it and then showed it to me. And it was about... Uh, the whole question of uh, uh, of, of uh, impeachment, and uh, I don't know how many of you in this room are for impeachment. Are you, Charlie? Are you for impeachment? Yes. How about you, Eddie? How are you doing on impeachment? Um, I'm, I think it's about time for impeachment. Okay, uh, uh, Jeff. How about you? I think it's the problem is you're going to lose anyway at yeah. this point. So yeah. why waste? Time. Yeah, how about you? T uh, how about you, um, uh, 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 Tony? Oh, um, I would say no because we're, I think you're just going to waste your time with it. And of course, we all know Phil is for impeachment, uh -huh. so I don't even have <laughs> to ask him. What is it, Adam Schiff? Is he the guy that's the head of the Judiciary Committee that, for the last two years, said he had guaranteed proof that Trump uh, uh, colluded with the Russians and he was a traitor? Well, if that's the guy, I want him impeached. You can't impeach him. For what? Well, I could push him off the cliff. You know, uh, because, you know, he, he's, uh, he's impugned Trump. Well, you can say that. Um, and, Trump and impugned whatever. himself. But here's the uh, thing. He mis oh, you should be well, pissed. Well, he misled well. all of you. He told you I never listened. No, no, he told know something? you I never, Trump I never, was a traitor. I never listened to Adam. Uh, to, is Adam is his first name? I think it Adam is Adam Schiff. 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 He's, uh, I never listened to a word he said in the last couple of years. I didn't even know he existed to the last three weeks. Okay. Well, that's where you were getting all your talking points from. No, it was. Oh, he's a traitor. No, I you have. Know? have did well, I, he, did, he's in. He's in bed with did, Putin. Uh, uh, well, uh, he, I, the, the, the Putin is the one that voted to to get Trump in office. That's where you got all your shit from. 
Well, no? I get all my shit from my you colon, like most back. people. Okay. <laughs> well, that's where he got the shit. Okay. From anyway, anyway, here, here, he pulled here, it out of his ass. Here's what this person was saying, and they're quite right. He said, uh, you know, they should never, they shouldn't even be thinking about it. You know, that it, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of at this point, uh, it has no purpose. Why it's make politics. him? Why no? Why, if you go and impeach Trump? The Republicans are going to back him, and it's going to make Trump look like he's being attacked. If you don't do it, uh, uh, the uh, Trump, by his own means, will ruin the de the Republican Party. But you, he you will he he will save it if he gets you, if he gets us to try to impeach him. Yes, Charlie. Charlie, are you frozen, Charlie? Yeah, you look frozen. Charlie, yeah. are you there? The problem with that is, then there's no... Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, go ahead, Charlie. Now he's in. Then there are no consequences for people who in the presidency for doing things against the law. Because the only... Apparently, the only consequence for breaking the law is impeachment. Because the Justice Department is never going to go after a president while he's in office. He didn't break the law. If he didn't collude... Uh, how could he, he obstruct? He broke the law over and over again. He broke the law when he made money yes. off of what did, Mar Mar a lago he What did Adam Schiff tell you that? When he had all of these. Uh, what do you mean? He told us. Trump told hey, him. You know that Trump has donated all the proceeds from uh, from uh, the, the uh, hotel in uh, Washington D.C. Uh, that. Um, no, I didn't know that. Yes, it, it, all the proceeds from anyone that was like a, a foreign person or a, uh, some sort of political uh, person, those proceeds were donated. They were given yeah, back to the government. Hotel. Good good for him. Well, what about Mar-a-Lago? What about Mar-a-Lago? They had to go somewhere. You know, that's... Uh, hey, if you if Bush went to uh, Kenny Bunkport or the other Bush went to uh, his ranch in Waco, Texas, or no, Reagan... I'm not worried about Trump going there. I'm worried about Trump no. making money by all those other people going there. Yes, but when, when all those other people uh, would go to... Uh, 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 when Obama... Uh, we're getting the kickback. Uh, when Obama would take everybody to... Uh, when he was on vacation, he would go to uh, uh, Hawaii... But Obama didn't own anything until he got out of the presidency. Then he then he owned everything. But uh, Bush, their family was very wealthy. The uh, Bush Senior had a place o in Obama Kenny Bunkport. Obama was very wealthy after he was president. Well, before he was president, his father was wealthy. Who? Uh, Who? Uh, 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 making nice nice with the Nazis, I think. He's talking but, about Bush, not Obama. Right. I'm talking about Bush. Obama didn't have squat. And you know, but he he left with forty million bucks. No, he didn't. Ha doesn't have uh, forty no, didn't million have 40 bucks. Million. He he got he had a house worth seven hundred thousand dollars in in Chicago when he became president, and he had a mortgage that was a sweetheart deal from uh, one of his people. Now he gets out of the presidency and he's got forty million dollars as his net worth. His net worth is. Are you ready for this, Phil? Yeah. And and yeah. this is uh, uh, as of, uh, well, no, that was in. Uh, 2008. What is it? Here we go. What is his net worth now? Uh, it it uh, I supposedly, and this is. He made millions off of his book. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. This is 2008. I, he was worth three million in 2008. I think it's 40 now. Yeah, I'm saying 40 million too. Yeah. You see him 40, what is his net worth? Uh, business, business Insider, I just looked it up. It says 40. Uh, it's 30, it's, uh, the Obamas were 30 times more than they were when they entered the White House. They had 700,000 when they entered the White House yeah. in assets. I think they, but, made, and they made it with books and things like that. Yeah. And, and yeah. He's made did, all did he keep his speeches. Nobel? No. Did, he, did he keep the million dollar Nobel Prize? No, he donated that to charity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Obama charity. Yeah. Well, you know, the re way in which you make a lot of money for being president is when you're no longer president, people want you to give speeches and yeah. they, you know, they want you to write books and you get the royalties from the books. And she wrote a book, which is a bestseller. Marjorie, yeah. in fact, has been reading it and says it's a very good read. Uh, and 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 so that's selling well. And so Hillary Clinton is worth 100 million, I believe. 
Is uh, that right, Ed? Uh, you probably find it in the same place. Hillary Clinton's worth a hundred million. Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, and remember, they were bankrupt uh, when uh, uh, you know, fifteen, eighteen years ago. Look, there are a lot of yeah, ways. Her book, it takes a village. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a speech at, at, at Goldman Sachs. Yeah, here, so, yeah, she made another money. Seller. No, but here, 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 here's 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 what we're saying here is that I don't think there's anything wrong with a former president making money off of having been a former president, as yeah, long as they didn't make that money after alive. their president. And as you say, the Clintons left the presidency. Almost paupers. I mean, they didn't have a lot of money because they had to spend all that money on lawyers for the impeachment, things like that. Yeah, I but think then, got the but number. then they wrote books and they made speeches. Oh, and, her, her taxes that she released. What? Yeah. What? What? What'd you say? Uh, taxes that she released. Yeah, she did release her taxes, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. How about that? Yeah, and she doesn't. Even, oh, well, did she release them when she was running for president? Has she released them yeah. lately? Uh, I don't know. It's just, the, uh, did the same article give her net worth? Uh, it says here that like two hundred and fifty million, but most of that was from Bill. One hundred eighty-nine from million from Bill Clinton, leaving Hillary with fifty-one million. Oh, okay. I thought she had a hundred, but then between them, it's close enough. Four billion between the two of them. Unbelievable. What do you mean unbelievable? What's what unbelievable, unbelievable about it? It's perfectly believable. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, to begin uh, with, she was working it, on those shovel-ready jobs. Well, no, to begin... Now, shut up, Phil. Jeez <laughs> almighty, you know. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that they both... Is she, he, everybody wanted to hear him speak because he was a great speaker. And so he, he did a lot of those speaking engagements. And he did them at like... Did he do them like at a million a clip or 250,000 a clip? Yeah, and, at least two hundred fifty thousand. And he do like five of them a week. I mean, he made a lot of money off the speeches. He made a lot of money off the book. You know, I mean, don't don't deny these people the fact that they they took a four hundred thousand dollar a year job in which they had to work twenty four seven, and after it was over, they made money from it. it yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. uh, well, look, you know, you're not talking about all the senators who, for instance, when they quit the Senate, then go get themselves a job on, uh, on uh, what is it, K Street or whatever, yeah. as, as, uh, as a lobbyist, as lobbyist and yeah. make uh, hunt, uh, you know, tens of millions doing that. Mm -hmm. And they turn their Senate, their, what, $135,000, $165,000 a year Senate job into a, into a pretty decent uh, living. I don't know that I hold that against somebody because that's considered part of what you do, you know. What do, do you, you think that there's undue influence that they know that they're going to yeah. uh, they're going to vote certain ways so that they know they're going to get this position in the future? Yeah. And that and that they're fucking us? Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but all I'm saying is I don't think for instance the Obamas did anything extraordinarily bad to make their money. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, Obama is a very popular speaker on the speaking circuit because he's very, whether you like him or not, is very well loved as a former president. He mm -hmm. has an empirical reputation. There's nothing sullied about him or anything else. Uh, yeah. Quite frankly, I don't think when he's out of office that anybody's going to want to hire Trump to speak because he'll just say the same fucking shit over and over again we've already heard. Yeah, well, they get free hats. They, they, they really. Yeah, you show up at the speech, you get a hat. Yeah. But, you know, something other, an interesting thing, there's a there's a, a poll that says Joe Biden is the front runner, runner over Democrats and over Donald Trump by eight points. And uh, uh, this is a thing called the Morning Consult political, Politico poll. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so they're, they're giving... Uh, Biden uh, a lead over Trump, you know, if you believe Politico. Yeah, I don't think I think Biden is going to uh, is going to he's going he's going to fall apart like the walls at Notre Dame. I mean, I I I don't think I, I you know it's one thing to say I think I'm running I, I think I'm going to run, 
uh, and everybody going, oh, run, Joe, run, run, run. And then once he's running, everybody going, well, I got my, I got my nut off. You know, now who else is there? Uh, none of those other people are electable. Oh, I don't. I disagree well, that's with you. Your opinion. I disagree and, uh, with you. you know, I, I, I just, yeah, run them. Uh, listen, you know, listen. Uh, no, where's I, my Mondale? I, pen? I'll tell you that to me, the Trump <laughs> killer is Buttigieg or Buttigieg or Booty Call. Uh, they whatever came his out name with is. some dirt on him, but you know <laughs> what? He, what he, dirt? As a mayor, what dirt? Oh yeah, he's gay. Did you hear he was gay? Yeah, no, as uh, a mayor. He has uh, dealt with some very high-end negotiations. I understand the PTA was trying to uh, come up with a homecoming parade. Okay, and uh, let me uh, let me ask you let me ask you what kind of experience does Trump have to be president? Buttigieg, 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 whatever the name is, uh, Pete, Mayor Pete has more experience in running a government than Trump does. Uh, yeah, well, of course, there was the time Buttigieg uh, dealt with the woman that had too many chickens in her front yard. Uh, and he really yeah, handled that's that very, well. That's not very, that's not funny. You know, it's uh, not funny. Uh, Palin uh, let me, let me was tell a mayor. You, let me tell you why. Did you yeah. like Palin's experience, Sarah Palin? Well, she was, she was a mayor. Do you think that she could have been president? Oh, she she saw Alaska, Bill, uh, mm -hmm. it's not what I'm arguing. What I'm arguing here is that Bo this guy has a, a dossier which is really was quite he pissing in, in in russia jesus can i finish all right well you said he had a dossier <laughs> come on that was fun continue no it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> how many thought it was funny raise your hand I didn't even nobody thought said. it was funny phil well that's because nobody listens oh right. i see okay anyway yeah. the, the point is that uh that I think that he has a he has a good chance of beating him because number one, a guy who you didn't hear about and you don't have a preconceived opinion about, you're going to listen to more than you are people who you've heard over and over and over again. This guy is fresh, and this guy is unapologetic about his gayness. He, in fact, I saw a shot of him kissing his uh, his husband. I thought that was wonderful. I I, I thought that that was brave and and not trying to hide who he is or what he is. Yes, Patrick. Um, I, I have to inform Phil that he and Josh Wheeler are in 100% agreement on Biden. That he's the only one that's elected. Mm. Wait, what did you uh, hear well, that? Well, uh, uh, as far as what, what uh, would uh, uh kissing his his husband. Uh, that would that goes over well in California. It goes over well in New York, and it goes over well in Indiana. I think is that. Where it was Chicago in is. such a way. It was in such a way that I don't think even a homophobe would be upset by it. Look, it, it doesn't. It doesn't register anywhere else. Let him run. It's going to be another. I'll Hillary. tell you. He will take. He will take him. To, he will take Trump to the cleaners because Trump can't fight him. What What can he fight him on? What he can, doesn't have to no, fight what him. Is, no, he, he, he he's has, stepping on his own he, dick. He, he has to do what, what Trump does. He has to insult him. He has to come up with a funny name for him and all of that. This is a guy who fought, took two, 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 uh, two tours in Afghanistan. This is a guy who went to, to Yale, was it, I think? Or was it Harvard? It was Yale, I believe. Hey, you know, uh, and, Trump and, went to Wharton. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty damn good school. Yeah, he, you can he, buy he your kid into Wharton. That's Penn, you know, it's he, went to, uh, State. Uh, he went to Harvard. He uh, went to Harvard. Okay, uh, but I mean, he, I, went to he, he speaks he speaks seven different languages. You know, Trump has a hard yeah. time with English. Uh, you know uh, what? Trump has a hard time with English. Yeah, Trump has a hard time hey, with English. Hey, Tony, you should talk. <laughs> I know that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta sound things out. I just, think, I just, I just think, I just it's think, true. you know, I think, but I number one, I think, I, yesterday I saw Kirsten Gillibrand um, with uh, Andrea Mitchell, and um, she is. I, I, I looked at her and I wanted to just yell at my screen, Kirsten, quit wasting your time. Just get out of the race and get back to representing New York State, okay? You know, because there's no way in hell you're going to get the nomination. As as much as you want it, you, you're just not going to get it. So why waste your time? I'm a New Yorker. 
I need my senator working for me and, and bringing back some pork to the state. Just quit already, you know? And there are quite a few others that I'd say the same thing about, and I don't know what they, what they expect they're going to get out of it. Now, Cory Booker, I can see. Cory Booker's got a shot at being heard, you know? Uh, 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 what, what's her name? Uh, the uh, senator from California. Harris. Uh, no, Camilla. Kamala. Uh, Harris. Kamala. Is it Kamala Harris? I, I think so. Yeah, from California. You want to know she's your fucking. Uh, she's not my senator. Yes, yeah, she is. Uh, no, she, well, she may be. Well, there, just like Trump. Not, just, just like I, I understand. Just think like, that just Trump like, is your president. No. Kamala Harris is not my senator. Oh, OK. All right. And I guess neither is... Uh... She won't prosecute cop killers. <laughs> and when she was a DA in San Francisco, uh, she, wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't go after death penalty for uh, cop killers. Hmm. And uh, I, I don't go for that shit. I know, because you were... Well, you were kind of a cop. Because I support the police. You support because the... I believe in their mission. What, beating up black people? Uh, well, maybe, but you know, no, of course not. You know, and they don't do that. Matter of fact, most of the cops that I know are black. Yeah, they. There was this case in I can't remember where they had on the air the other day, in which this couple were in a car and the cops just started shooting at them. Mm. And the two cops that were doing it were black. And I'm going, let's see here, what's the what, what's the take on this one? You know. Were they white, the, the people in the car? Uh, I don't think so, no. no. Oh, okay. It was black on black thing. Could have been a drug deal. I but no, they were shooting at this car. They, and they told them, get out of the car. And then he, the, the guy opens up the door, gets out of the car, and they start shooting at him. Did the guy have a gun? No. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no. He had no gun. He, had, he was not threatening in any way. Hmm. True. Oh. If he were white, they wouldn't care if he had a gun or not. They wouldn't have shot him. Uh, yeah, but this is black on black. Uh, black cop, black driver. I, I don't know. I don't know what color he was. All I know is he was a blur on TV. They had the body cams working. And these guys, yeah. these cops were just shooting at this car. And then they tell the guy, get out of the car. And he gets out of the car and they start shooting at him. That'll teach him for running that stop sign. That's right. Boy, are they are, are they strict? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a twenty five mile an hour zone. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, so you know, what the hell? What the hell? So uh um uh let's see here. So uh, no, but I was asking about the guy what do you think about these militias at the border who are trying oh. to trying to do their job to help the border patrol, in spite of the fact the border patrol doesn't want them to help. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's a touchy situation. Uh, you know, they're they're talking about uh, posse comitatus and sending the military down there to is that posse uh, comitatus. Uh, what is posse comitatus? You round up uh, a posse comitatus? Is that what you posse, do? That's yeah. the law that you Sounds can't like use the military police on Americans. On soil. Americans, but not necessarily on uh, uh, people soil. coming over the borders. You know, the Central Americans and the uh, Mexicans. Not just Americans. It's on American soil. Yeah, but no, they can use them uh, to stop uh, 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 people from coming over the, uh, over the border that are breaking American laws that are not American citizens. Uh, well, you know, let's let's get uh, Jeff. Any anything to proffer on any of the things we're talking about? Because I want to bring you into the conversation. Too bad Wheeler's not here. He'd know. I might. I might like to say something, but go right ahead. <laughs> but anyway, the the, the idea of uh, shooting the people uh, from the cops. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Stuff. I mean, who knows know why, why this stuff happened? Well, I think yeah. I think the problem is I, I, you know, I mean, we and I could I could defer to Phil on this because he would know a little bit more about it. But who's vetting these guys? You know, I mean, I know that that they used to be careful in uh, in, in in police departments against guys that they considered were guilty of. <coughs> Uh, 
or, or had the possibility of having what they called a wired ERP syndrome. I'm going to give you one, Alex. Yeah. I was a cop. <laughs> they vetted me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, did they give you any psychological tests to make sure that you didn't have Wyatt Earp syndrome? Yeah. You, you know, in the in the days that uh, that they were taking us as level twos, I became a level one uh, subsequent to being hired. Uh, but level twos at, in those years didn't get uh, a psych test and didn't get a um, uh, what, what was it a lie detector test. Mm -hmm. um, but now they do. So I was grandfathered yeah. in, you know, in yeah. the days that they didn't do that. If they yeah. would have done that, I probably wouldn't have been a cop. Yeah. I'd been Did a you do, were you able to carry a gun or no? Oh, yeah. I still can carry really a gun. Did? I mean, yeah. when you were off duty? Yeah, I, I can still carry a gun. It's uh, uh, LEOSA, uh, which is uh, the law enforcement, uh, I, I forget what the other words stand for. Oh, but uh, They should have paid you for that, no? Well, I mean, if I I wanted if they, I wanted to be they would have paid him if he was him. good at it. Well, <laughs> I was good at it. But uh, Leosa is a, is a law. It's HR two eighteen that was passed under Bush uh, W uh, that said anybody who was duly retired uh, and was sworn uh, and uh, carried a gun in the uh, in their in the thing can carry a gun now. Concealed. I wish I could have found this thing this guy wrote that Marjorie uh, had me read yesterday, but it was it was very good, and it basically said that it would be a big mistake if the Democrats tried to impeach Trump. That it's better off to let him do what he's doing already, which is taking the Republican Party and turning it into a shambles, and that that to go after him in an impeachment would only make people kind of take some people take pity on him and that it would give the the republicans some real fodder uh, against them in the upcoming race that they need to just concentrate on beating trump that if you want to get him out of office don't impeach him beat him you know beat him good so yeah, yeah leo says the law enforcement officer safety act and okay. uh that's uh, it was enacted in 2004 um has, has anybody come up with a reasonable strategy for stopping Trump? Well, I think yeah. that the best strategy, the best strategy is to go out to the American public and play to what they feel are things that are wrong right now. And I think one of the things that's very wrong, I think you can go, if you go out on medical uh, care, uh, I think that's a very good one because I think all Americans, even those that would vote for Trump, know the price they're paying to try and get medical care or the fact that they don't even have it at all. Uh, you know, but that, that is one good thing that you can go after. I think that, uh, um, I think that you can go after the economy, oddly enough, by saying that the rich are getting richer and the poor are still staying poor and the middle class yeah. is being, still being crunched. Yeah. And, 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 and say things that will resound uh, with, with, with the average guy out there and the uh, average woman out there, rather than, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, uh, you, you can't, uh, this whole idea that you can't be too much to the left or to the right, I think you just got to be you, and you got to talk about things you think are needed in this country. And what we need is a rebirth of our, of our, of our goodness, and we've lost that, you know. And what I also like about Mayor Pete is he's quite religious. Now, I'm not for religion. I'm an I'm a, I'm a atheist. But nevertheless, I, I feel... You know uh, uh, that his religious uh, feelings and the fact that he is a re religious guy will play well in the Bible Belt. So, uh, in other words, he's he's the he's the good guy. So, what are you doing? What what do you what? I'm I'm trying to get rid of the stench. What stench? Uh, the stench of what you're talking about. You know, that he's going to do well in the Bible Belt. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think, I think he's a flash in the pan, and your mayor Pete I, I is, don't think he's, I think he's, uh, you know, he's, he's got 8%. Uh, there's no, he's going to, he's got, he won't have the money 
there's too many moneyed interests he has in a seeing certain, wait, other he's people. He's raised the third largest amount of money. It, it's not enough. He's well, he's only at eight percent approval. Is, he's behind is, Kamala Harris. Is, is, no, he's not. Eight, no, like he the is in the in the approval ratings. I saw he's not eight percent. He's in well, third depends place. Depends on which state. He's well, in you know, third place. Iowa and New Hampshire. He's in third place after Bernie and uh, and Biden and Bernie. Yeah. He's All in right. third place. So where? How do you have him at eight uh, percent? That's what I saw this morning. Where? Uh, where would you? Uh, uh, Rasmussen? Uh, probably. No, yeah, probably. It Rasmussen. It was. Uh, uh, it was CBS that I was watching. I'm not sure. Okay. They don't use Rasmussen. Oh, they say, use uh, Politico. Uh, but uh, um, let me. Uh, Buddha, uh, how do you spell that? <laughs> Say that again. D u t t i g i e g. Ranking Democratic. Democratic. Uh, what is it? Democratic candidates. Ranking. Uh, okay. Ranking Democratic candidates. So here's the question. Can I ask everybody? Okay, here, here we go. Bernie, sure, Bernie Sanders is number one in the yeah. uh, in in it, and uh, says he's okay, nine. Okay, here we go. No, um, uh, Bernie Sanders first, Joe Biden second. This is according to CNN Politics. Kamala Harris third. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So I said he's behind Kamala Harris. He's behind but Kamala what, at, Harris. At what percentage? Wait a, minute, wait a minute. And Pete Buttigieg is number four. Yep. Well, on this uh, CNN poll, they got him at nine. No, this is uh, a CNN poll taken today, and it's Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, uh, Beto O'Rourke, followed by Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Cory Booker, Kirsten Gillibrand, and Julian Castro. Uh, he jumped 14 points uh, in the Granite State poll today. You can, uh, launching you, him in the top ten. Well, in the Bennett poll, he's number one. How's that? You're going to now quote that? <laughs> well, the, the Bennett poll. I, I'm, doesn't I'm taking count. CNN politics, which is a pretty good poll. You know, they just they they're just trying to find out what's happening. And uh, Bernie Sanders is number one. Biden is number two. Kamala Harris is three, which I think is is interesting because I didn't think she was doing that well, and I like her. And, There's a big uh, difference and, between and, them. And Mayor Pete uh, is number four. Now, I understand in rankings one, two, three, and four, but if you, you look said, at the percentage minute, of what would... they're getting, there's a big disparity between number four and number one. Uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. Uh, you know, you could be number four of a, of a group of four. <laughs> Still means you last. Uh, maybe yeah, he has a low Lord. percentage. Yes, uh, he does. Okay. Uh, bu- 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 it doesn't give any percentage. Uh, no, previous rank, his previous him. ranking was five, so he's gone up one. Uh, oh, so he's number four with a bullet, huh? See, yeah. here's a question, though, yeah. I think, that I can ask everybody. Yeah. You know everybody pretty much other than Phil wants universal health care. Yeah. When was the last real policy that the Republicans or Democrats really passed that helped the middle class or the regular guy? They all promise and never can deliver. Well, I mean, uh, the yeah. ACA helped the middle class. Yeah, the Affordable oh, yeah. Care Act helped. Well, it 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 they did. Told me I it, kept my kids on health insurance. They were twenty six years old. That helped them a lot. In the time they got a job, okay. you know, <laughs> come on, you know. Why? But you make everything twenty six years Phil. old. He, you yeah. just asked a question. Somebody answered it for you. Yeah, okay, so it was good that he was able to keep his kids on health insurance until they were 26. No, but I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, the ACA was something that they passed, which was the yeah. best they could get done at the time because the Republicans kept stonewalling them and wouldn't go along with anything that was really reasonable. I mean, you when, know, we're, when, we're talking, when we're talking about Medicare for all, which is really what we should be struggling for, uh, uh, there's no fighting for that, you know. I mean, that that's a big fight. That's a big one to fight for. What do you think, Patrick? You, you're you're the you're the guy who's got every ailment known to mankind. Well, come on. Oh yeah. Plus, I'm very happy that I had uh, my son until he became yeah. 26. How how uh, uh, P- Patrick mm-hmm. Patrick? How are you covered medically? Because you've got a lot of issues, right? Yeah, and since I'm not employed full time right now, I'm I'm on 
You're on what? Disability. Disability. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and is that does that take care of your needs? I mean, financially. Uh, you, you mean as far as medical. income? Well, medical. as far as outgo, actually. I mean, in other words, in your medical bills and so on, how much of it does it take care of? Eighty percent. It, it same as Medicare. Mm -hmm. But I can't afford to get a secondary, so I'm paying that twenty percent that's not covered. Would it be is that twenty percent uh, more than it would have cost to get a secondary? That's what I was going to uh, ask. Yeah. Oh, not, that, that's the that's the thing that really well I shouldn't say <laughs> that I don't have bills that big, but the bill that I do have, uh, like last year out of pocket, mm -hmm. was about six thousand dollars. <laughs> it would cost more to get yeah. a secondary um, insurance or broke even. So yeah. to me, it just, it isn't worth it. <laughs> So, in other words, in the money that you're putting out, it doesn't amount as much as you would have to pay for that secondary. Right. Yeah, because right. because what I find is that secondary is pretty expensive these days. You know, I mean, yes, my, my uh, if we weren't getting if we weren't with SAG after, which is a wonderful deal because we both for the two of us we pay two thousand dollars a year. That's uh, terrific. And that's terrific. Uh, but before, uh, when I was at Sirius and I had to have a secondary, it was running me, it was running as close to $400 a month. So what is that? That's almost double, <laughs> double and a half. $5,000. It's almost $5,000 yeah. yeah. And, and by the way, by the way, for this uh, 2000 a year, I also have this dental, of which I get $2,500 a year. The, the, as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, yeah. so that's very good, and I also can get glasses too. Um, mm. But I you know, know if I Jeff, yes, uh, Jeff got his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to tell you guys that I pay. I think it's more like six or seven thousand mm. dollars for the prime, for the secondary. Really, and and having it. Is that for the both of you, for you and your no, wife? No, that's just me. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. And remember, I'm 73 years old. So, you know, I, I'm getting paid by the government, so to speak. Well, and, I'll, tell, um, I'll tell you I'll tell you what we have. But I got to tell you that my costs are like zero. Once I pay the premiums, yeah. because there's a certain amount of stuff that you got to pay I don't know, five hundred dollars of something or other before you can even. Yeah, on yeah. on my Kaiser deal with uh, Medicare, it's going to be uh, including the vision and the dental. Uh, it's fourteen forty a year for the secondary, and uh, there are no deductibles, just a thirty dollar copay, and uh, and and that's it. So, uh, which is pretty much the deal I had before the Medicare deal. But I was paying thirteen hundred a month. But the point is, mm -hmm. the point is that, for instance, we were. Uh, uh, <laughs> the funny part was that at her job, we our secondary was being covered by the insurance policy that was covering her at her job, and that was twenty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to get the and all they were having to do was pay the secondary. Wow. So yeah. she went to her company and said, "Hey, look." I can get this SAG after it, and it's two thousand dollars a year. Will you pay that? And so they're paying our our uh, supplemental for it. Nice. Even if they have to pay uh, taxes on it, it's still a lot cheaper than twenty if grand. Tomorrow, you know, if tomorrow, two thousand is if maybe what three thousand. If ta tomorrow, with tax. if tomorrow she no longer was working and she didn't have her, they weren't taking care of her medical. But still, mm -hmm. we could we could somehow scratch up the. Five hundred dollars every three months, you know, yeah. for yeah. Uh, for SAG after it's yeah. been terrific, and the and the dental is fifteen hundred dollars is twenty five hundred dollars as opposed to fifteen hundred dollars like Delta Dental usually is. Yes, Jeff. If you really are concerned about the cost, the best strategy that I know is you get on an airplane, 
It probably costs you a thousand dollars to go to Australia, and then it's free. Even if you're a visitor to the country, absolutely. Should I should get my teeth done? I've been there. <laughs> Thought you did. No, I mean now he wants my tops. I'm not giving. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jeff, Jeff's been there. Tell us more, Jeff. Well, I was I was there, and uh, I had to go to the hospital uh, to have my blood checks and and all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. and I said, well, how do I pay for this? So we don't we don't charge anybody for anything. We don't do that here. What is, what is what is so wrong that with that nice. concept? What is wrong with that concept? Doctor, how many people live in Australia? 20 million? Oh, geez. It isn't a matter of how many people live how in the many, country. Yes. Bill, how many people are paying taxes in this country? <laughs> and, and, and they work. How and many they people, how many people are paying taxes? And so do the people in, Aust and so do the people in Australia. And yet they manage to take care of their own. Isn't there something nice to say about taking care of your own? Yeah. I'm going to ask my friend Matt, who's Australian, the guy I got my uh, computer from. Uh, I'll, I'll ask him, uh, what, you know, what the deal is on He'll the He'll probably tell you it's wonderful. You know, when I talk right. to Canadians, they say it's wonderful. Yeah. You know, they have no, no, com nice. no complaints. As I say, my, my, the guy I know, Ted Randall, who's a, the disc jockey, he's now 92. I said to him, well, you moved to Canada. He said, yeah, and I live in Canada. I said, do you get Canadian health insurance? He says, yes. I said, how good is it? He said, let me put it this way. If I were still in the United States, I'd be dead. Yeah, at 92, everything's wonderful. You know, you yeah. make a joke about everything, Phil, rather than, yeah. than discuss okay, it. Okay, so you don't want then jokes. I thought this it. was humor and politics. No, it isn't. Not when it, <laughs> oh, okay. Not when it's, it, it's, no, it's not it, humor. No, no it is, it's, hum it's, it is it's, humor and no, politics. It's anti-Trump. Let, let me it define is. it, Phil, for you. It's yeah. not... Uh, it's it, it is humor in politics, but it's not bad jokes in politics. Well, that's all I got. You know, you want to pay me double? You want to double what I get paid? I'll come up with better jokes. I'll pay for my. We're jokes. coming towards the end of the show, Eddie. Anything you want to say about any of this? Uh, no. <laughs> How do you take care of your medical? I have. Uh, I'm in a labor union. Uh, you're in a labor union, so you've got it through the union. Is it a good plan? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, do you have to pay into it, or do they just yeah. take? I have twenty dollars copay, and wow, yeah. the, the rest. Is so good. your employers pay for it. Well, well, well yeah. are you employed now, or are you retired, or what? Oh, uh, I'm employed. I work at a refinery. Oh, okay. Here. All right. So you know, so you're you're covered. That must make you feel good. And that's why gas is four fifteen for regular right now. And by the way, it's going to go up the five. Actually, on the one front here. Uh, hold hold say, on a second, Eddie. Yes, go ahead, Eddie. He said the, the the labor cost during negotiations. They said it's like three cents a gallon. Yeah. So it's it's, it's not four fifty because of, of of my health insurance. No, it's be it's because of uh, Brown and uh, and Newsom. Brown and Newsom. Uh, how, how about trying Trump and his uh, yeah. his? Uh, Trump is not the one that's it's beating up California with all of these taxes and special blends. And special yeah, but this Trump, Trump, because bad. of his tariffs and so on, is causing a, yeah. a problem okay, with the so gas prices. Okay, so I won't get my I won't get my gas in Mexico. All right. Yeah. If you got it in Mexico, it might be cheaper. Yeah, really. Probably is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it would be or cheaper. in Canada. Yeah, yeah. You can get it cheaper in Connecticut. That's that's right. And we're not that cheap, but California is very. Yeah, I, I saw what is Connecticut two, two, two something Arizona. now. Yeah, I was paying two sixty something. Yeah, I paid Costco. four fifteen for regular today. Well, listen, we had a wonderful show tonight in which everything was in sync. Uh, I, I I noticed that my live Maybe. camera, which I'm looking at, you're not looking at, is off. Okay, but the, the, my main picture is fine. Everything worked perfectly tonight, except that I fucked up the beginning by accidentally stopping the interview with Ronnie and having to start it again. But outside of that, kill me. Okay, anyway. Well, you had hey. a lucky seven tonight. It's, it, it's uh, what do you mean, lucky seven with me? Yeah. Yeah, with me. Okay. Thank there you, Phil. There would be nothing here if it wasn't for you. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Eddie. Call us more, Eddie. We'd love to hear from you more often. Uh, uh, Jeff, love hearing from you. Charlie, always good hearing from you. And, of course, Tony, 
I think your mother's calling, Tony. She's sleeping. <laughs> anyway. right yeah. Everybody, garage. give a big wave goodbye, okay? All right, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm waving goodbye to them myself, okay? There they go. Okay, let me uh, let me get rid of them here uh, unceremoniously and uh, turn off the uh, Skype so that, uh, well, we don't need it anymore, okay? That's our... Uh, it, 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 Everything worked tonight so far. The show isn't over yet, folks. It may still have problems. Anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. I'll be back again uh, tomorrow after the uh, uh, the, inter uh, the exchange with uh, Damian Chaplin. Uh, the intersection with Jack Bishop is next over most of the same station. I'll see you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.